see. And then people like us, oh, they call us, oh, extortionists, and we're this and we're that and we're that. Um, I'm an extortionist because I refuse to take buyout. And you know, and, and they very well know what I'm saying, that you know you guys have offered me money before. You send your people to offer me money to come on board with the PP and all of that. And I refused on numerous occasions. You're unemployable anywhere in the world. You were unemployable at Fenico when Aflu was in government. You were unemployable in Fenico when Aflu was in government. Sir, I can't help it if I am employable anywhere in the world. I, sir, have the good fortune. So when my mother sent me to school, I went to school. I am employable anywhere in the world. You are not even employable at Chronicle. You are not even employable at Chronicle. When my own government was in the What is most important is this danger of this dangerous development where Guyana is treading along the same lines of China, Russia where they're going now to attempt to kill, kill their citizens abroad or kill their nationals abroad who oppose them. Okay. So my advice is to everybody in Guyana, when you are going now, get a tape recorder, put on your voice recording, whatever, whatever, on your phone, and start videotaping these people. And now give us video messages where we could put out there, let's say. But even when Melly Mel put out video messages- And even when I put out video, they say it's not true. He's saying it's not true. So how, how do you um, discredit people's stories and their experience? That's what I'm trying to understand. I'm, he I'm hearing the heckling being led by a man who was fired for fraud by his own AP and UAFC government. Let the record reflect that Gita Chandan Evans fired him at the Chronicles. Fired him for fraud at Chronicles. And has the audacity to come here to heckle me? Response to what Ronda just said. This is not a government, man. If they were a government, they would have understood what Ronda just said. These guys are not politicians. This is a group of thugs that have no proper understanding. Because what we're, what we're talking about is issues. And they're taking it a whole different level. Whistle? No, I'm no, I'm, I, I, I know, I know, I know a lot. I know about like ten of them that are now getting contracts from the government, that are now working with the government, that are now, you know, the family now getting this, now getting that. So once, once what's happening to Guyanese doesn't affect them, is that there people are at the point. Once what's happening to Guyanese, to the regular Guyanese, to the poor man, but once it's not affecting those at the top that are friends with the government that are friends and family with the government, once it's not affecting them, they literally don't care. So they don't know, they don't know what's happening. They don't care because it's not affecting them. They take the buyout, they take the brog back, and they eating, they drinking the soup, the loud soup, eating three square meals a day, and they just rock back, just relax and refuse to say anything for anybody or speak out against anybody. And then people like us, oh, they call us, oh, extortionists, and we're this and we're that and we're that. Um, I'm an extortionist because I refuse to take buyout. And you know, and, and they very well know what I'm saying, that you know you guys have offered me money before. You send your people to offer me money to come on board with the PP and all of that. And I refused on numerous occasions. Wanna thank you for making it this far in the video. But could you please take a few seconds, if you haven't already, to drop us a like. It really helps to promote this content in the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button cost you nothing and you'll be able to have a notification every time you drop content like this i'll wait thanks right back into the content so now i'm an, now I'm, now i'm an extortionist because i refuse to take the money you know to join them and to promote and to promote the one guy and a bullshit that they wanted me to promote Oops, you did say the word on this Jehovah Witness platform. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. You can say you, it's okay. So here's what Marlon Williams is saying. How come no journalists in Guyana don't ask Jack Gay questions like who gives the police powers to serve person? N nobody asks these sort of questions. Um, Otto, and then wait, go ahead. Your take on what Marlon Williams is asking. Oh, the real journalists don't actually turn up to Jack. Let me just say the real, the real credible credible news source and credible journalists in Ghana 
don't go sit down in press in, in, in um Jack Dio. Let me answer that question. Don't go sit down in Jack Dio press conference. You know who goes and sits in Jack Dio press conference? Man, man. Daily news, newsroom, Mark and Fariz and them from newsroom. Newsroom, Daily News, the Ghana Chronicle, Ghana Times, all the state the state owned newspaper those are the person that goes to down into starbrook news and and news source and the and, and agp tv they have time for going to sit down and listen to, to jack deal ramble he nonsense and ask you no question anybody the the credible news the credible news news entities don't go sit down at jack you um news conference so you won't hear those questions being asked certainly won't hear those questions being asked uh we're joined here by uh rhonda Bob, Rhonda, Bob is with us. Hi, Rhonda. I thank you today. I tell you the man talking to you. I know it's me talking to you. <laughs> What's going on, Rhonda? Good night. Before we get sorry, Otto, let's hear from Rhonda. That's, that's quite all right. That's quite all right. Um, I, I, I feel so uh, I see everybody be... tag me in this thing that says he, he, he talking to you. So I'm like, me? I know it's not me talking to him. How I feel about this, I don't think that he is just threatening Guyanese in America. I think he's threatening Guyanese all around the world. Absolutely. Because, and not only that, I think he's trying to scare the Guyanese in Guyana because they know no better. You understand? So when he said it, oh. no, nobody's going to send us the info that they normally send us. Right. So, Melly Mel, you get a lot of stuff in your inbox on a daily basis. Now he's saying, if I go to a ministry office and they tell me that I got to bribe them, whatever, if I don't have a recording of that or if I don't have, have a a tape of that then it didn't happen so my advice is to everybody in Guyana when y'all going now get a tape recorder put on your voice recording whatever whatever on your phone and start videotaping these people and now give us video messages where we could put out there let's say but even when Melly Mel put out video messages and even when I put out video they say it's not true he's saying it's not true so how how do you um discredit people's stories and their experience that's what I'm trying to understand. You don't care. They don't care. This I I I don't I don't think people I don't think I don't think people guy the Guyanese pop um the Guyanese population is coming to grip with the fact that this government don't care. They literally don't care. Corruption is blatant. You can open you you, you literally see corruption every day, and they don't care. I don't even think these people are. I don't know. They, I, I'm I'm thinking that the people probably know something that this that the, that the Guyanese population don't know because i can't see how a government can be so blatant corruption can be treating the people can be treating the people of the citizens of, of Ghana like this and not care they probably got something up the sleeve come 2025 for the election because who going to vote for these people to put them back in power i don't know i i felt they I probably felt know something that we know mark or mark they mark and like to me they know something that we don't know because no, this, no. Is the, this is the no. worst I've they, seen. They, they know what's going on. They yes. know that they have lost the elections. They're, find, they're trying to find ways to rig it again. But Otto, your take on the journalists that they're yes, so quiet, yes. they're not asking the sort of they have, They have gradually been allowed to grow into this juggernaut. For lack of anybody who's standing up against this type of tyranny, and this type of governance, they have been allowed. Let's not operate like we don't know why this government got this shock and awe value with people now. That Rick Burke move is to is, is all across the board. It's to silence everyone and mm -hmm. then pontificate on it and tell people, oh, you can do this, that, and the Well, here's Jackass deal. I, unlike these. Uh, esteemed gentlemen, a little more raw with it. Understand what's going on. You ain't yeah. gonna put no guy needs in the place where you are, but you've been allowed to. There is a silent majority waiting for vote you out. Tech long and do all you want. First thing is not gonna work. Let's get to that. Let's get to that. As you're silencing nobody. Wake up. You got silent the influences in Guyana. I got dark little mobile. Who? Who? I'm sorry. All I hear you because I got you have woken up. People. Well, Mark, oh, I'll yeah. do. Well, I can oh, talk from Sunday to Sunday. Me missing a Sunday, I can talk mobile. No, this no. I'll do. When he did that, was motivate me. Because in I nothing will shut me up. Yeah. Melly Mel and Rhonda and, and Wayne and uh, he doesn't know that this has inspired people to talk more and there will yeah. be 10 more 
10 more influencers and so forth. Was, the hope was, the hope was, cower. the hope was, we cower. I did a video where so I just asked right. him, I said, if you can discredit anything that we've spoken about when it comes to GPL, the Guyana Water Incorporated, whatever, how, Ministry of Housing Corruption, the GR, um, the Guyana Police Force bribery thing, domestic violence on the rise, school uh, violence on the rise, well. all these Very things well. that we've spoken out about, if you can discredit it, I personally call you and give you an apology. But he can't discredit none of it because these are real stories that come in. And people send videos to back up these stories, you understand? So what is it that we said about your government that you don't like? Well, that is you know, irresponsible. Well, you know, you know, he so chose, he chose the word wise. He said irresponsible comments. Irresponsible or wrong, the just said. This is not a government, man. If they no. were a government, they would have understood what Rhonda just said. These guys are not politicians. This is a group of thugs that have no proper understanding. Because what we're, what we're talking about is issues. And they're taking it to a whole different level. You know, that's why, Mark, I'm of the opinion that I am not going to tolerate it. And there's nobody that's going to ever come on my property and serve me anything. That's why I stand by that. You know, not nothing, is, not nothing coming from Guyana for sure. No police. No police. One second. Uh, good point, no. Wayne. Otto. That's nonsense. Um, Rhonda, what are you gonna do? You gonna pull up? You gonna do the throw the writ over your shoulder? I'm Janet. Janet, Jago ripped the salmon up. That's so, me. I pull it one and I. Why, why do you I suppose? Because that's... your platform, Rhonda, has expanded. Yeah. Why do you suppose that? Uh, Whenever you talk and you highlight things, his bumps is raised. I think because I give it to them raw, like I really give it to them like that. You see, Melly Mel do pose, but I speak out. I literally speak. I curse everybody out. I do whatever. And I take people like that raw. That's the thing. No, I don't you don't like it. Well, Mark, one Mark, second. Otto, Mark, he doesn't you know? like women either. He doesn't yeah. like women. His bumps must raise. Well, he blocked me on Facebook, so. Rhonda. Let's see Otto. Rip that stuff up again, Otto. Let's see. Go ahead. I got a little piece. God damn it. I nonsense <laughs> coming from there. Uh-uh. What is wrong with this guy? I was shocked with the whole thing with Rick no. I was like, like, wait a minute. I was like, Rick Ford, collect that. Listen. I could he see you. He lucky he ain't going to the right. He lucky he ain't going to the right. This is wrong. He has a video of Rick Ford for collecting this summer. Well, let us call on the guy in the police force at Jack Deer. Let them leak that report out to newsroom. Let us see Please. that. Let us see that video. Of course. I don't know what's going on. I mean, there's so many issues in Guyana for them to address and deal with. Why are they worried about people in America? Like, I'm seeing people starving every day. They got so much homelessness happening. Um, so many poor people right now. Children suffering on a daily basis. What? Why? Oh. Why are they taking, <laughs> why are they taking the people's anything. money? So I'm why not sure they, why they're not why are they taking the people's that? money? The, the people's money. The people's money to expend on this nonsense. Well, the people of Guyana have to stand up against this sort of nonsense. They're taking taxpayers' money. They don't go into their private accounts to do this nonsense. No. Exactly. La ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Rickford Burke from his uh, his basement. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. My basement got bright lights in here. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was in prison. Right <laughs> <But> I, <can't. laughs> I thought he would have been in prison by now, Rickford. Jack, really? Jack, 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 my you, sister. Your, 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 huh? social study, your social study teacher, he, he makes us tremble. We are afraid. Wow. <laughs> What's going on with this sister? Hi, Rhonda. Hello. Uh, how you doing? Hi, Wayne. Hi, everybody. Good night. My who? Rhonda. So, so much study. You, you know Wayne as a junior? Hi, junior. Hi, That's right. I'm not talking about Rick Ford, they demand, that you be in, they demand that you be in court this way. March? March 14th. March. Vigilance. Yeah. Rick Ford, Vigilance Magistrate Court, brother. Yep. Vigilance Ford, but, 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 hang on. What is your take on this here? Go ahead. Um, I just think that, well, first of all, um, a U.S. official told me that they got a report that Barry Jagdeo said that he is so essential. He, Barry Jagdeo, is so e essential 
um, to U.S. oil security, energy security, because he controls Guyana, that he will get what he wants. That's actually what he said. And I think they picked it up on surveillance or something like that. So he's now testing the resolve of the United States. And he's signaling to them, listen, I'm going to come into your backyard. I'm going to come into your country like China and India. Country. Little country. Going to test the United States to say, we're going to come into your country and do what we want with your citizens. I want to show everybody in the diaspora that this, what they came to my house and I, people tell me, why did they shoot them? Why did they? I did the right thing. I went to church and worshiped my Lord, according to Desmond Hoyt. And now U.S. law enforcement has taken over. So I want to tell everybody, have no fear. This is not a case of the guy in the government coming or pretending or attempting to serve me with something. That was served with nothing. And Jack Day was boasting that he has a tape. Release the tape, Mary Jack Day. Release the tape. Release. I welcome them. Release the tape. Because no one served me with anything. But... What is most important is this danger of this dangerous development where Guyana is treading along the same lines of China, Russia, where they're going now to attempt to kill, kill their citizens abroad or kill their nationals abroad who oppose them to um, send police officers, armed police officers. He is um, saying some nonsense that, oh, Burke, that's in, Burke says anybody believes. He's saying we send our people. The guy in the police force has not denied that they send, that the people who came to my house had guns. The federal officials know that they had guns. New York City police officers that are pursuing them know that they had guns. And Mark, I heard on your program, you said that you verified with NYPD that there is an investigation. The Ghana police force said there's no investigation. Well, Barry well not, says not, only, not only have I verified with the NYPD about an investigation, uh, they have given me the, um, I, I do have uh, the case number, I have the um, the complaint number, I have the detective's names and everything. But yet the Guyana police force continue to peddle this lie to the public uh, to say that there is no such investigation. And all I would say as it pertains to an investigation higher than NYPD in another law enforcement agency, that investigation is ongoing through another law enforcement agency, um, to be precise, the FBI. There is an ongoing investigation as to what happened at your house. And okay. I, I prefer that has been confirmed. And so we don't come on this show and spread propaganda and this and that. It has been confirmed. They lied about NYPD. Let's hear what they are going to say about the FBI's. But my, but my, let, let me say what this is important. Yeah. What, what happened at my house is not people trying to serve some, some court paper. That's not it. What happened to my at my house was a crime against the United States. The guy in the government send armed police officers and an armed private citizen to perform duties on behalf of a foreign government. That well, the allegations that Melly Mel is making. You heard it, guys. What do you think? Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section. Do you think that these allegations are founded or unfounded? Do you think that she's making all of this, st this stuff up? Is she somehow lying on the persons that she's speaking about? Because these allegations are pretty nefarious. It could be a situation here like that's going on in the US right now where millions and millions of dollars have been funded into creating ads to promote political agendas. Now we gotta ask ourselves, everybody's make money doing promotion and everybody do the videos and they get paid and compensated for building their platform. So a person can legally be paid to do videos and ads to promote any campaign. But you gotta, you gotta now take a better look into what's going on because some of the allegations that she's making is that persons is taking money and taking benefits to stay silent and not advocate for others when they see the, the persons in authority doing things to hurt or to suffer those that are affected by those in power.
Now, this situation is one that some of us might be aware of because we grew up in GT. We know the political affairs in Guyana is handled in two ways from a racist perspective and from a money perspective. But we always got to look around in Guyana and ask ourselves because we're looking at the infrastructure and everything we're going on in Guyana, right? We got to look around and we got to ask ourselves are we really benefiting on the greatest possible scale from the infighting and the bickering between the so called races and political parties? Because there's a greater colonizer, my perspective again, I'm bringing in because. We're not gaining the most from this. Somebody at the top is gaining off of the two largest so-called racial groups in the country going at each other. And we gotta now realize who and what that might be. Because when we do, we might be able to step and transcend these years and years and years and years of us just being so hard on each other being so mean to each other when we live in one of the richest, if not the richest country in the world. Why are we living like this? Why are people suffering like this? It's because we're infighting and during the infighting, persons are finding leeway because remember everything is good and everything is okay in love and war. So if the two greatest or the two largest groups of people in the country are at war, then anything is good, anything goes. And then the ones that are benefiting the most, which is the international colonizers, the larger so-called first world countries around the world, keep plummeting our resources, plummeting everything in the country. And guess what? We don't have a unity and a house divided cannot stand. A country divided is going to be plundered by persons who are going to come in, manipulate one side against the other more, set up a little problem between this one and that one, and then guess what happened? Here we go again, another stretch where there's no cooperation because later on in the video, Ashni is going to speak and Ashni is going to be eating and chewing them out in the politician, in, in parliament actually, in the political arena where things should be conversated upon that's going to be for the development of the entire country. Persons are in there getting scolded by the doctor, which is pretty funny and entertaining for me. I entertain, I'm entertained by things like this, As, you know. And Ashley, yeah, you did a masterful presentation. I watched you stand there for hours and hours and present. And I must say that that's not an easy task for any person. And we must not just commend you for that, but we must commend you for your many, many years of service in the country. But Melly Mel is making some allegations against the PPP. And she's saying that she was paid to support and to create content to promote their agenda. Now, this is legal. This is not nothing that is illegal where persons are not paid for, to do this every day, any other day all over the world. But if some of the things that she's saying is real, then we really need to consider if this is the direction we want to go as a country, if this is how we really want to have our generation continue. It's like I grew up in this, I grew up in this bickering back and forth. First it was, it used to be Desmond Height and then you had other persons in the PPP for a while, it's been Jagdio for a while, it, then you had Sam Hines and you had um, the late great Miss Jagan and Mr. Jagan that was at the head of that party at a particular time as well. So it's like, what's really going on? We need to find some amount of unity amongst ourselves. We need to realize that this fight between so-called Indians and so-called Black is futile because all of them bear the same genealogy. Indian people and black people bear the same genealogy. They come from a line of genealogy in Ethiopia. And if you look around in Guyana, you can see most of the persons who are pro-black, like the Rastafarians, they're going to claim heritage to Ethiopia. So it's clear to see that it's a unified history, but there's somewhere along the line 
that we might have forgotten that these are our brothers and sisters. So why are we fighting and acting like that and allowing persons to come in and use us in the country? Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section, guys. And let me know if you guys were entertained by how Ashni scolded, scolded the members of the opposition while masterfully presenting that um, budget that's one of the largest budgets in the history of Guyana. Let's have a conversation in the comment section about this, guys. And the mounting. And the mounting, of course, it's Guyanese coming because they're coming now. During 2015 to 2020, they were going. Of course, it's Guyanese coming. My point precisely, I did go. And I went, I went on self-imposed political exile because of the political persecution. Because of political persecution. I was a victim of political persecution by the APNUAFC. But I will tell you this, I will tell you this, I may have been a single, I may have been a single prominent person. I may have been a single, I may have been a single, I may have been a single person. Sir, sir, I may have been a single, I may have been a single. I can't help it, Honorable Sarah Duncan, if you're unemployable anywhere in the world. You were unemployable at Quantico when Aflu was in government. You were unemployable in Quantico when Aflu was in government. Sir, I can't help it if I am employable anywhere in the world. I, sir, have the good fortune. That when my mother sent me to school, I went to school. I'm employable anywhere in the world. You are not even employable at Chronicle. You are not even employable at Chronicle. When my own government was in the Chandan, Gita Chandan fired you. Gita Chandan fired him. Very good, sir. Sir, I'm hearing, sir, I'm hearing the heckling. Want to thank you for making it this far in the video. But could you please take a few seconds, if you haven't already, to drop us a like. It really helps to promote this content in the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. It costs you nothing. And you'll be able to have a notification every time we drop content like this. I'll wait. Thanks. Right back into the content. I'm, he I'm hearing the heckling being led by a man who was fired for fraud by his own AP and UAFC government. Let the record reflect that Gita Chandan Edmonds fired him at the Chronicle. Fired him for fraud at Chronicle. And has the audacity to come here to heckle me? You imagine, sir, imagine, sir, the Honorable Sheriff Duncan fired by Gita Chandan when they were in government for fraud of the Chronicle. Your favor the Chronicle and money up. Your favor the Chronicle and money up. He paid back Chronicle. Where is Gita Chandan? Where is Gita Chandan? Sheriff Duncan paid back Chronicle yet. Your favor the Chronicle yet.
Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I will say. Mr. Speaker, I will say this though. I will, I will also say this. That this is how, I will digress for a moment. This is how democracies work. Democracies work in the following manner. When you lose an election, sir, you either proceed to opposition or you exit politics and do something else. You don't know, hold on to power with your fingernails clinging. You don't know, hold on to power with your fingernails clinging for months. Honorable members, please, please.